In this video, we're going to go ahead and derive the explicit form of GLS estimators. So remember what GLS is. Essentially what we do is we have our original model, which is y is equal to x times beta plus u. And then what we do to that model is we transform it by multiplying both sides by our transformation matrix, which we know now is equal to the variance covariance matrix to the power minus a half. So that now yields our transform system, which is omega to the power minus a half times y is equal to omega to the power minus a half times x times beta plus omega to the power minus a half times u. And then what we do is we then estimate OLS on that transform system. Because we know that the transformed error is homoscedastic, OLS will then turn out to be blue. And in this video, we are going to go ahead and actually derive the explicit form of GLS, which is actually when you do all of these things in one step. That, that is what defines GLS. OK, so I'm actually going to go ahead and use the previous notation which we had in that I'm going to call P omega to the power minus a half, just because it's a bit easier to write. So if we do that, we have that P times Y is equal to P X beta plus P U. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to call some of these variables different variables just to make it a little bit simpler for us to deal with. So let's call the transformed dependent variable Z equal to P times Y. And let's call the transformed independent variable omega, which is equal to p times x. And actually that should be a, a tilde underneath the omega because it's a matrix rather than a vector. Finally, let's assume that our transformed error epsilon is equal to p times u. So if we assume all each of these things, we can then rewrite our system using our transformed variables. We have that z is equal to omega times beta plus epsilon. And we can estimate OLS on this transform system rather easily. We can just use our familiar form of our OLS estimator in matrix form. That's just that beta hat OLS is equal to, well, we're going to have omega primed times omega all to the power minus one times omega primed times the dependent variable, which in this case is Z. OK, but we can actually substitute in now the explicit form for omega and z, and that will give us a form of the GLS estimator. So in order to do that, we note that omega transposed is equal to p x all transposed, which is equal to x transposed times p transposed. So if we substitute this in, we then have that, which I'm now going to call our GLS estimator, beta hat GLS, is equal to, well, we have omega prime, which is just x primed times p primed times omega, which is just p times x, all to the power minus one, times then omega primed, which we know is just x primed times p primed, times now z, well, z is just equal to p y. And finally, then, if we substitute in for the explicit form for p and for p primed, noting that p is equal to p primed, which is equal to omega to the power minus a half, we then get that beta hat GLS is just going to be equal to x primed, then p primed times p is just p squared, which is just going to be omega to the power minus one, times x all to the power minus one, times x primed, times omega inverted, times y. So this is the explicit form of the GLS estimator, and note that it involves the inverse of the variance covariance matrix. And using this particular estimator, we know in the presence of heteroscedasticity, it allows us to get blue estimates of the parameters.